1980s. Uh, ooh, this one's just recently made, but it's from 2003. And all the rest are, are relatively new. Ah, I worked in nature for 30 some years. And uh, first of all, I worked very zen a long time ago with no camera. And I didn't, nobody would see the work, so suddenly uh, some friends from France gave me their Zenith camera, which came, was made in Russia. So that was my first camera, and I became a photographer. But not to be a photographer, only to capture my work. I don't like photography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the photographers over here, that's what. Of course, I'm married. So I, 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 just, sure. I, I just go to a site and clean it up, and that's my environmental issue, and I use materials that come from the site and make something. So in the beginning, I would use reeds because we're there and they were weed and nobody liked them. So I still use reeds in various pieces. Reeds, uh, reeds, reeds, and reeds. And then whatever the situation has to offer. Uh, when there's no reeds, when I was in Florida, I had to use whatever was there. I just used seaweed that washed up on the shore. And then I finally can move. Sometimes you have to solve an issue or be faced with some, a conflict to, to resolve it. And the, the second piece is made out of trees. And the, the bad thing about this project is I wanted dead trees. And the Koreans said, take these trees. And we went to the woods and cut five uh, chestnuts. These are Christmas chestnuts, or what they call called chestnut trees that you eat. And it was kind of a shame to cut them. And we, we haul them. And that's on a YouTube video if you're going to watch YouTube from Korea. And the idea was horizontal trees. So the theme of horizontal trees became the theme of this year, uh, 2014. So I made this piece of Korea. And then near the end, there's a problem with this definition over the land. It was a great piece when you were close by, but it sort of blends into the land. And that's probably working on land. So I said, I want to do something over water. So I came back home and I had to wait until the weather got warm because we had a cold September, so in October, I was at Cedar Lake near my studio and I made this piece in, in the blue. So it's five lines in Korea, so five lines here. And you don't know where Sabusi should stop and where it's too much or too little. And it was very simple, and then when the wind stopped and the reflection appeared, it became a complex, a real volume, that's sculpture. So nature works with my work most of the time. And um, one more piece. Oh, I need a chair for my head. Hello. OK, we, we made this. Ah. This is the third piece. Uh, I made a piece in 2002 at KM Art Gallery. I used the same materials, and we did a sway across the room. I like the natural science. And, and the feeling of this kind of sagging line. Uh, hence, I proposed twice to the Triennial in Madison to make a work with dogwood, and they always rejected, rejected. So here, I have an opportunity to make a piece, so I uh, went out last week, Thursday, we could go Thursday, and pick this material, and it was just a wonderful time when the ice just happened to have freeze, forces of ice up clear. So I walked over this piece, which is an ounce of underwater, and then I picked these things. I could walk in the swamp and get this. And when I came here, I have a preconceived idea, but when I got here and saw the trees or the branches, I had a new figure because the room is this kind of space. And what I was going to create was a triangle from this series of work that I made in uh, uh, North Michigan. In, um, where was that place? Ironwood, Michigan. Ironwood, Michigan. Iron. And so that, and that was playing in structure, so I played the structure in another way. Um, this piece is peg. That's not peg. This is peg. And this is at the Linden Sculpture Garden, and I made it in July, and it froze into the ice kind of gorgeously, and then we have this nice contrast of, of pristine snow, etc. So <coughs> I think it was a, an animal that came across with very little feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, nature has it, all these little blind blind eyes. So it, the shadow was great, and before there was reflection uh, in the work when it was on water. Right, people are saying that since yeah. yesterday, the sculpture has come down, that the Threads have become um, looser and it's come down because it was That's hydrated. because you have that half of the flower on. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh. Oh. Actually, yeah, Actually uh, Mark wanted it higher because they have events here, so I made it uh, higher about six inches. But with the heat on here, this, the, the, the fishing line sort of lets it come down. Oh. Right? So it's, I like it though. 
I would say I need to mark that. Last week, we had a great winter, so I went uh, to Big Cedar Lake. There's a place called Gilbert Lake, but there's nobody around, so I made works there. I went to Greenfield Park, where this piece is made, and I made four pieces there. In the, in the afternoon, they go out and walk on the snow because it's pristine. This is where I used to ice skate. You can't know if there's ice anymore, so perfect for me. Yeah, for you. <laughs> um, this is the early work, and the reason it's in the show is because I, it's a newly, newly made print. And what's important about it, this is 2003, it's three lines. And that, the resolution to make this piece is, I knew I wanted one arc line, and I wanted to come here, but I didn't know how to make the line. And in the process of thinking and, and contemplating the drawing, this S-curve was kind of beautiful. Before. So for me, a three-line piece is the essence of the work. Uh, otherwise, we have a circle, which is not in control. Uh, and sometimes we do many circles. And that's a pure form, and the circle gave it oval, and that's another form. Questions? Are you, do you actively draw now, or are these all like, built out from like, drawings in the past? No, no drawings, I just go to the site and make the work. And most of the time, it's in my mind, what my figure will be, after I draw it out. So I can do a rough sketch, like this is a rough sketch, and then actually, as I'm working, it, one line, and then the next line, ah, I know what to do then. But as I'm doing it, if it doesn't work, I redo it or, or make it work. But nothing on paper? Or nothing? nothing on mine. I would sit in the sand and draw in the sand. Mm -hmm. and, and then once in a while, I would photograph that, that drawing. <laughs> but if, if that drawing is the sketch idea, and, and these are the real, real things. Mm -hmm. And the real things, okay, so these are made for the camera in most cases. Um, only a few people saw this, only a few people. And I waited till after sunset because I was waiting for the tide to come in to get this reflection. Where was that? That's on Long Island, East Hampton, but on the bay side. Uh, and it's there because a, a tidal stream goes in and out and made a sandbar. So I had a shallow area to work. And actually, I made a piece there, God, in 1983. The first time I worked there. And, uh, and uh, then I didn't go back until the occasion arrived that there was a reason to make something there. Because I was working on the other side of Long Island and the pond, and there were too many people, too many rich people there. That sometimes <laughs> complain that they art. Free art for them, huh? <laughs> um, Which was the hardest one of these to make, and why? Uh, the trees was, was heavy. And uh, all the other pieces are like made by me alone, and because I can carry the reeds and assemble, put it together. And a smart artist works uh, with their body and, and what they can handle. The, the trees, I needed uh, a crew of people to get the trees there. And then I had another woman helping me as I was working. And uh, for my age, it's pretty uh, heavy work. Um, uh, the piece in uh, northern Michigan, I worked alone. I had a ladder. I made the fingers on the ground, and then I brought them up in the air. And uh, the reason for that work is uh, this is an iron uh, wood. And uh, there was a mine disaster in 1924, and the mines were owned by various people that we know, like the Carnegies and Pat's Brewery. And then the, uh, the, the Pat's mine collapsed, and the people were trapped there for 24 days. Oh, I read the text. And, and then they were saved through a tunnel, and the reason why uh, they were waiting, they were in, in, in a certain uh, layers below the mine, so we called it layers of waiting, so I made the work that way. Uh, this was a, a new con uh, contest in Michigan. It was very nice to be part of it. I heard about it. I applied to do it, and there was a thousand dollar prize, and uh, I didn't get the prize. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the story is, you don't go in really far away uh, from real cultured centers to make work, because they had no idea what my work was about in art and nature. Because the other person who got the prize brought a lot of tchotchkes of, of little dolls and two little things and flowers, plastic flowers, which are pretty good, and put them on and got a prize. <laughs> so the idea is you don't want to join the Michigan. <laughs> well, what? One minute, one minute. What? Oh, you're from Northern Michigan. I'm from Northern Michigan. I just wanted to say, uh, Andrew Newport. Actually, uh, I have to dispute your uh, comment about not being a photographer. Some of these things obviously show a 
an amazing amount of patience, getting up at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and being there at this very moment to take these photos and they're great. Mm -hmm. uh, be there. And there's no one else will do it. So, and, 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 and if I'm going to have to hire a photographer to sit with me, I, I, I don't want to do that. But you sit there and you have a tripod and you wait for the tide to come in, like this piece over here. Thank you. you go there one day early, and like one day it was, I was living on, on the other side of the, of, the, of the dunes and the hills, and I came in just after the tide. And you missed it. And then the wind blows after 8 in the morning, maybe. So you have to be there when it's calm for the reflection. And it's just, a photographer's about waiting and waiting for the right light. Uh, or like this piece here, it's sunset. It's always sunset. But I, I was there in the morning too, hoping to get it in the morning, or sometimes in the afternoon the water gets still again, and it becomes very, very natural. <coughs> this place is so special. This is the bay. This is uh, Governor's Bay, almost the sound. And I never knew the ocean would become totally calm, but it comes, becomes a great place to be. But I, I'm sitting there, and I, I come in with the nature, and you wait for the crickets to come about at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then you know it's evening time, and then everything sort of calms down, and I'm just waiting for that, the, the right moment to photograph for it. I, I, I'm a, we talk about being an earth artist. Well, I observe the earth, and I live in the earth. And, it's, and some, being a city boy, it's very hard to do, but I am. Uh, I go to where I have to go and do what I have to do. But in the middle of Brooklyn, you can do the same thing on the, on the East River, well, more before than it's developed now. I lived in Brooklyn for uh, almost 15 years. And I started doing the work when I was living in New York. And so we go to that story. I lived in Paris, came from Paris to New York in 1980. And then I tried to do the galleries and show my work that I made in France in the galleries in New York. And you couldn't, they wouldn't talk to you or look at you. So then I had one show at the Cooperative Gallery in 1980 and nothing in 1981. Uh, there was no way to get past the, the white desk. And then I just turned my back on the whole system. I went out in nature and did the drawings. I started to do on paper and did them out in nature. Then I learned some things. Working in nature, straight lines are, are great lines, but if they're real long, they start to wobble. So then I changed from straight lines to bent lines because a bent line holds its shape. And, and, and that's how I learned as you work. I, as, as I work, I, I watch what happens, and that's observation. It's, the photograph helps sometimes, and, and uh, then the work evolves. Then we have themes of work, either circles or ovals, which I use a lot, and then we have to break the rules and go back to straight lines again. So then this piece I made, and I gathered the, the reeds uh, where 45 and 41 come together uh, near Germantown, and I ran out of them, and I thought, oh, well, in this field we have some prairie grasses, so I, I, I used some of these dry things, and they didn't work. Uh, they were too fragile once they got wet. So I had to re sort of remake the work when it's on the site. And it's also, uh, it's, it's a peg piece. Ah, not peg. This is woven in between. And then sometimes the tension of the reeds holds it together, and then other times it lets go. And, and I had to go back into the water, and when the water was really cold in November, I went back and made it right. Because there's no reason to take a picture of something that doesn't look very good. <laughs> and it was really cold Spoken in like my legs, right? uh, very red, right? Yes. yes. But the photos are, are very important, aren't they? Because nature destroys the work eventually, or it's, it's gone. And do people also buy the photos? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 